Hey, what's up guys? This is Durian Productions. Today, we have a brand new Acer Swift 3 SF314 with the latest Ryzen 4000 series Ryzen R54500U central processing unit. Inside the box, there is a laptop, a charger, and a cable. The box is all in brown color. The charger is very small, a 65 watt charger. I would prefer this type of 3 pin charger, which has proper grounding rather than 2 pin charger, such as MacBook, which will shock you electrically sometimes. It feels very light on hand with approximately 1.2 kilograms. It feels as if the inside is empty. The back side is pretty standard, while you can see a good Swift logo at the bottom. The speakers are on the left and right side and the bottom. The plastic stand is rubberized and provides enough amount of adhesion to the table. Something not ideal is that your fingerprint will leave easily on the metallic traces. The build quality is okay and it feels quite soft on hand. The right side comes up with a lock, a Kinson lock, a USB type A, and a headphone jack. The left side, there is a power plug, a USB Type-C, an HDMI, and another USB 3.0 port. In total, the connectivity is pretty acceptable, but for sure, Acer can include a bit more, such as an SD card reader in a 14-inch chassis. You shouldn't use one hand to open the laptop. The good side is that you can open all the way 180 degree to flat. The screen is a nano bezel screen with an Acer logo properly positioned at the bottom. The camera at the top is very small. One downside is that it doesn't even have any protective glass layer. The Swift logo at the middle looks very premium. There is one very annoying part about this laptop. You cannot see clearly from this video. The keyboard is actually pure white, while the chassis is silver. It looks as if milk on your silver color metallic chassis, which is a bit more obvious right now. The keyboard feels just ordinary, pretty good. We can see that all manufacturers are getting better, making better keyboard. The trackpad is pretty clicky, quite responsive. While it's not very smooth, I'm not sure about the materials on top, but it's definitely not as smooth as glass. The arrow keys over there includes in total 6 keys, which is a plus. Once you press the power button, the strong backlight keyboard will be turned on. The Acer logo is very, is very green, which is absurd. So is the art on the desktop. The new Ryzen 5 4000 CPU is pretty swift. It's very hard to tell the difference. What's the difference between this and the 3000 CPU in daily life? But you should expect better performance, at least 30% to 50%, comparing to the previous generations in heavy workload applications. Everyday work 
is definitely swift, quick, and no significant delay. Let us now go to a YouTube video to check out the screen and sound quality. to write essays that inspire, messages that forge. Our next guest, all she was trying to do was catch a train in the London tube, and now she is one of the hottest videos on internet. Here's why. Raw sound quality is better than my expectation. You got some bass and the high frequency sound is not annoying it is definitely better than average for this price range just like six seven hundred dollars laptop it is good as for the screen quality well straightforward this is a pretty pathetic screen we have been knowing that acer is doing ordinary screen all the time We open IDA 64 to check out some hardware specs. It is the latest Ryzen 4500U CPU, 6 core, 6 thread. If you know about Ryzen 4000, these are really power efficient CPU and will generate very low heat and even very minimum cooling can give you high performance. The battery is a 48 watt hour battery the idle discharge rate is around 6.5 watt. Thereafter, you can expect approximately 8 to 9 hours idle while probably 6 hours, 5 hours for normal walking. It shows that the optimization from Acer is actually quite limited. Even though we try to adjust the brightness or turn off the keyboard light, it doesn't really help a lot. The memory is dual channel DDR4, around 50 gigabytes bandwidth, which is very high. The dual channel 3200 frequency is very high. The monitor is from LG, which is a good display, although it's generally not as good as the BOE or those Chinese IPS manufacturers. This laptop is basically the most entry-level IPS display which you can find a few years back. The solid-state drive is a very specialized Samsung PM991. It has a very small form factor around 2242 size. It's less powerful compared to the larger PM981. And thereafter, you shouldn't expect high performance on this solid state drive. Well, it's still pretty swift compared to SATA. The Wi-Fi card supports Wi-Fi 6 and is from Intel. For benchmark applications, we have tried the Blackmagic Raw speed test and it's not going to. And same problems happens for AS SSD. We can only run part of the check and the score is low due to the partial scores are not counted. The only thing we can read is the Semibench R15 here. The CPU score is 765 CB, which easily surpasses any scores from Intel Core Core A thread CPUs. The OpenGL is around 60 frames per second, which is about 60% of MX250. Really amazing. And the CPU single core is exactly the same as Intel, around 170 CB. In Ryzen 4000 series, 
you can finally say AMD yes. What we are expecting is that some other manufacturers such as Asus, Lenovo can give a bit more, work a bit harder on cooling system so that the total benchmark and the performance will be even higher on the same spec sheet. Now, let's stress the CPU for some time. Before stressing, the battery discharge rate is around 8 watts in high performance mode with 40 Celsius degree CPU temperature. After started, the frequency runs all the way to 3.7 GHz maximum and drop to 3 GHz. The battery discharge rate is only 10 watts. Actually, it is a mistake from the software and the actual discharge rate is around 20 watts. The frequency is very stable and the temperature is moderate. Let us keep it for 10 minutes and we get back after 10 minutes. As now, the 15 minutes, it's very apparent the temperature is around 70 degree, which is considered pretty okay, and the frequency still around 3 gigahertz. The battery discharge rate is still around 23 watt. You just need about probably 18, 15 watt to power the 6 core CPU, which is amazingly power efficient. This is significantly more power efficient than Intel CPU, which need at least 30, 40 watt for six core CPU to run at three gigahertz. Now let's stress both CPU and GPU. The temperature is basically limited to 75 degrees around. The GPU clock is now 9.5, 0.95 gigahertz approximately. The CPU frequency is pretty decent, around 2.4 GHz, much higher than general Intel CPU, around 1.8 to 2.1 GHz for most laptops. After 5 minutes of stress test, both CPU and GPU, the total temperature is limited to 70 with a low discharge rate around 26 what? This is extremely amazing. You can even game 2 hours plus on this laptop. The frequency of CPU is still 2.4 GHz. The GPU is slightly lower to around 750 MHz, approximately 40 to 50% of the maximum frequency. It's not a serious problem and you should be able to game properly using this laptop. The amazing part about this laptop itself is that we can hardly hear any fan sound from this laptop. It is able to keep the laptop very cool even when stressing the laptop happily. The front mark frames per second is around 16 frames per second in dual stress test. After we stop the CPU side stress and test, now it's 20 frames per second. If we are talking about the raw GPU performance between 3500U and 4500U, they are approximately the same. But if you are talking about the actual performance 
in a limited power envelope, then 4500U is generally about 60 to 70 percent more powerful due to its significantly more power efficient and the 7 nanometer process 